Cheers, Chris from 40 Thrive. This is not a political channel, so I'm going to keep it relevant with something that this channel does uh, talk about sometimes, and that is a fine cigar. And that's something that uh, I think is needed, much needed right now in this time of conflict. Um, our country is very divided right now. And, you know, as much as I want to just talk about something else, it's, it's like trying to, it's like trying to ignore the elephant in the room. So let's see if I can't help in some way contribute, um, a little bit of, um, protocol here, I guess is maybe not quite the word. Maybe a little bit of uh, just good old-fashioned male virtue. Uh, maybe maybe just some good old human virtue. You know, there's there's a lot of provoking from both sides over who is right, who is wrong. There's a lot of hot button issues that keep getting brought up. But but what I'm hearing mostly is arguing. I'm hearing criticizing. I'm not hearing a lot of thoughtful. As much as we want to point fingers from one side to the other, no one is asking, why do you feel this way? And what can we do to fix it? Now, I'll be honest, I, I used to be a diehard Democrat. My father was a blue-collar steel worker. And looking at what the Democratic Party represents now, my father would be spinning in his grave. And while initially I was not the biggest Trump supporter, it was more like, well, okay, yeah, I, I definitely see a lot of crazy on the left, so I'm going to go with the guy on the right. I now recognize and identify with and relate to a lot of really uh, strong leadership traits that I see now from, from Trump. Here's the problem. Even mention the word Trump, and immediately anyone who's not a Trump supporter distances themselves from me or anyone else who says this and immediately labels me as some very hideous terms. I don't see the same reciprocated from a rational conservative-minded person if we're in the same room with someone who obviously despises Trump, despises uh, Republicans immediately just assumes that just because I like Trump I, I align with everything that, that they believe to be uh, on the uh, uh, conservative agenda I, I don't pretend to know politics I don't pretend to know all the uh, all the bills. I don't pretend to know all of the uh, all of the issues. I don't. I don't. What I do see is a lot of lunacy. And I and I have said this multiple times before. I recognize patterns. I see threats to our health, to our society, and I feel that a lot of those. A lot of those problems stem from a lot of lies, a lot of dishonesty coming from, um, you know, maybe just let me just pause. This is a very, it's a complicated subject to, to attach, uh, or to, to attack. So I'm, I'm mentally torn, okay? I mean, I know who my candidate is, but that shouldn't automatically label me as some of these horrific things that that immediately get uh, assigned to someone who, who, who wants to vote for Trump. Um, I even had someone comment earlier, they're like, wow, you're, you're really nice. Um, and, and I have to say, I was so disappointed to find out that you support Trump and I didn't know what to think of it. And I didn't know what to think of you. And it's like, 
why should my why should my political affiliation define my character? I, I have so many leftist, liberal, democratic friends that I respect. I just choose to respect where they come from. I, I assume that wherever they're coming from it comes from a good place. But I don't see the opposite. I don't see the opposite. Yeah, I know there's a lot of racist, like, boneheaded, hillbilly, like, I get it. But you want to know why there's so many, like, like ugly people attached to the Trump uh, campaign? It's because you labeled him a racist monster. And so when you label someone a, uh, someone a racist monster, all the racists are going to come out of the woodwork and say, yeah, that's my guy. The left created and is perpetuating this, this, this conflict. They don't want to admit it. They don't want to, to believe it. No one wants to admit when they've caused a problem. Trump is not perfect. He's not articulate. He's not eloquent. But I don't care about that. I mean, should it be a good quality in a leader? Sure. Is it? What matters when it comes to the strength of our country, the protection of our country? No. Every leader has come with their redeemable characteristics. Some are great. Some, they could use some help. I mean, for God's sakes. All right, right now I'm leaning right. Did I like George W. Bush? Absolutely not. He was a buffoon and corrupt as they come. I didn't vote for him. I, I, was, I was, you know, you want to talk about voter fraud? I... I totally think Gore won that election but you know what in the end you gotta look at the greater good stand behind your president you know like I I don't agree with Biden but I didn't go burning cities over it you know like let me let me just uh, um, let me dial it back for a second so that said I, I've been witnessing a lot of ugly talk about the the, the attempted ass assassination on Donald Trump. I see a lot of ugly talk from the left. And, and when I pointed that out on social media, I was reminded of the fact that the right hasn't been angels themselves. And there's been a lot of ugly talk from the right. And the, the, the president's own son made a very grotesque remark about uh, the attack on uh, I guess it was it was Nancy Pelosi's husband. I think I don't know. The point is, we all we all need to do better. We have to do better. We have to be respectful of one another, or this is going to end very badly. We need to stop and learn to listen to one another. Do you want resolution, or do you just want your way? Do you want to be right? Do you think? that you're right? Do you think that you know everything? Do you think that there aren't flaws in some of these bills and, and things that are in issues that are being presented to us? I want to reinstill the faith. I want to encourage, I want to motivate and inspire people to stop and do the right thing before you get worked up and before you react emotionally to something React compassionately to it. Try to understand where someone's coming from. Ask them, how does this affect you? Why does it affect you this poorly? Why do you feel like this is a threat? I mean, there's a lot of polarizing issues being brought up. A lot of people are afraid that Trump's going to take office and just all of a sudden just take away all these rights of, of a lot of progressive movements, and I don't think that's the case. Do I think he's going to come and, and help, you know, eliminate a lot of unnecessary things that, that maybe we've been being lied to, that maybe we think stand for something noble, but we don't know the full truth on it? Can we just stand back and, and, and just... I, 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 even as I'm trying to form the words, I know it's like, yeah, right, Chris. Yeah, right. So before things erupt, before things get so heated, don't let what you see on social media dictate your actions. 
Your neighbor is your neighbor. Be kind to your neighbor. I don't care what orientation they are. They're a human being first. Just like this person who tried to take out Trump. Trump's a human being first. He has a family. I don't want to hear about, well, I want to hear about uh, where, where was all this caring and compassion when it was a, a, a school shooting. Listen, no one's advocating school shootings, you moron. Sorry. But seriously, no one wants to take a step back and look at like the mental health of this country, and that is paramount. That is where all these problems are coming from. And stop and ask why there is so much mental illness in this country, and you'll get down to the root of our differences. There's a lot of angles to this. There's no one bad choice of words, one magic bullet that's going to... find the one true cause of the problems and the differences in this country but there's something that within our power and that is love thy neighbor love thy enemy let's all remember what this country is founded on okay it's founded on democracy it's 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 founded on all of us have a voice The lies have to stop. You know, do I think that, that Donald Trump is the most honest guy with the most, you know, integrity when it comes to how he had, had to handle a lot of business? The things that they're trying to, you know, accuse him of have little relevance to leadership of this country. Yeah, we all want to see... Um, some some shining pillar of society lead this nation. Uh, good luck finding one. Sorry, but if you want to get in politics, you have to know how to play a little dirty. You have to know how. But Donald Trump is probably the only one honest enough to not be able to be bought, to be influenced by the machine that is currently running this country. And again... I'm not dismissing the priorities of those who don't align with Trump. There has to be a middle ground here. I've seen good on both sides. But we cannot allow all this division to overcome our better nature. We have to see that we're all in the same boat right now. And, and I talked to a friend the other day, excuse me, just a, the earlier today brought up a good point as silly as it might sound why do we only have to have one leader it sounds to me like the unsolvable riddle you we clearly have the, a two-party system because we have people with multiple uh positions on policies Yet we expect one person to be able to unite those two parties. It seems kind of absurd. You know, it it, it almost, she, I, I, as, as silly as it sounds, she, she suggested, why don't we have two presidents? You know, just much like a business has two partners or multiple partners, and then they get together and they have a board meeting. And they decide, well, okay, can you agree to this? Can you agree to that? It's just throwing it out there. Throwing it out there. It, it may be crazy. Now, I understand this video is probably not going to get the most likes. It's probably not my most popular video. But again, I have to acknowledge the elephant in the room. And uh, I even was not even considering having a cigar. Uh, for a while, I, I, I just felt kind of cigared out. But, you know, my good buddy Fred, who one day I promise you'll get to meet on this channel... Um, gifted me with this cigar and, and I've actually been thinking about it for ever since he gave it to me it's it's such a perfect stick it's not this big fat you know gonna invest your entire evening in it cigar um, normally I, I, I get on this channel and I talk about how it smells and tastes right off you know the very first light which is quite honestly 
not a very accurate representation of the scar. You don't get into it, uh, the, you know, really when you get, until you get this far into it. This is about a little more than halfway down into this cigar. It was a long, slender cigar, about the, about the width of a little more slender as my fingers. Nice, rich Maduro wrapper. Uh, I don't know what blend it is, but you can see how nicely it's burning. Such a nice, good, clean burn. It's one of the few cigars that I've smoked that have not gone out in the middle, uh, which is, if you want me to stop smoking a cigar, that's that's one quick way to do it, is just give me something that doesn't burn all the way through. Like, this is so nice to smoke, and I, I did get some very nice perfumey notes off of it, some leathery notes off of it, uh, some, some espresso mocha kind of notes off of it. Um, this is a Oliva V or 5, depending on, on, you know, what you choose to refer to it as. Listen, I, I very much care about the future of our country. Uh, because I have a son, we, we have children out there, uh, regardless on where you stand, we can have a country that respects both, or if not all, sides, okay? It's, it's not easy, there are some very polarizing things, it's once you start to impose your beliefs and infringe your beliefs on other people's, it, it, it gets, it gets sticky. It's very hard to to, um, you know, convince people that maybe something they believe very strongly in might not be for the, for the greater good. Or sometimes it can just sound very scary when you mention that there's going to be a change to this policy, but it doesn't mean you're not going to be represented anymore. What is that? Is that a spider? What is that thing? I don't know. It can it can be very scary, you know. If if you're someone who feels that you're not represented, and you're fighting to be seen and be represented, it can be a little scary when you have somebody that the media has labeled as this hateful. Um, bigoted person and I, I ask you to dig a little deeper because if he's such a racist homophobic bigoted uh, uh, a misogynistic person why are there so many people from so many different diversities that still support him I, I'm not saying that this is you know, I'm not telling you who you need to vote for, but but just question, question, stand back and look at things. And, and I'm, I'm I'm about as unbiased as they come. I had no reason to really like Trump at all, no reason to. I, I, I have I've lost pretty much a lot of my faith in in the political system. I really have. But when I see someone who is as resilient and defiant, someone who has been he's been campaigning for damn near shit when did he start running 2016 was that the first time he ran and we're at two, two, 2024 right now and he doesn't have to be doing this he could have went away he lost his first the first time he ran he lost and everyone thought it was a big joke when he came back but i'm telling you the man shows fortitude a lot of people are trying to um write off what they saw in, in the clips about the assassination attempt about how he they think it was staged because he, he managed to tell his his secret service wait, wait, wait and he did what a leader is supposed to do show strength and, and resiliency and he showed the country I'm okay that's important that's important even when a when a, when a, when a uh, an athlete gets, you know, uh, defeated in the arena, they still, you know, 
show that like I'm, I'm gonna be okay you know uh, you know they, they they criticized him because he said get my shoes or something to that effect yeah you, Donald Trump has never ever ever shown a weak side do you think that if any foreign uh, entities are, are watching this this event unfold do you think that he wants to be escorted off stage barefoot like like a feeble weak wounded man no he's going to he's going to walk off stage under his own will a lot of people asked why isn't the crowd scattering I'm gonna tell you point blank that that is just the way that people who follow Donald Trump are wired I hate to I hate to be so polarizing on this but but it's it's true like we don't we don't act on emotion I myself personally I don't when when something if a loud noise occurs somewhere I don't emotionally react like 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 a shrieking like oh, what was that oh my god I don't do that I I might win I might flinch for a second and I'll stop and I'll observe and let's just see what's going on here because I need to know how to react I need to hold I need to maintain my composure and that's what I was seeing a lot in that video people maintaining their composure let's face it 95% of those people in that crowd probably carry and so they are trained trained to not immediately uh, panic so it was, it was you know f discouraging to see the way that so many people are looking for ways to 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 find so many negatives in this when we really should be taking notice of the fact that he showed strength he showed resilience And again, I I hate the fact that I have to worry about losing friends over this. I have so many people that I have, you know, that I'm still friends with based just just I know they're intelligent, I know they're smart, they're respectful, and they mean well, but they don't align with my political views and I respect them. I I don't understand why there's not more of that. You know, like you immediately you may as well have a SWAT skull on your head if you if you say you like Trump and that's just not the case. It's not the case. So, this is going up on my 40 Thrive channel. Um, and in the end, I, you know, I, I have to, I have to think about that. You know, um, this, this definitely puts me, um, kind of in a vulnerable position but I have to ask myself you know do you, as, a, as a man I don't mean that in the sense of like you know uh, in, in the I guess what I'm trying to say is it doesn't matter man, woman I'm, I'm talking about you know as, as someone who acknowledges that I have a duty as a male um, it is it is my duty to stand up for what I believe in, voice my opinions, standing in in the shadows where it's safe um, is not is not what you do. As as a man, as anyone with integrity, you have to be willing to be willing to face the consequences of of your beliefs. And there are people that are going to try and immediately just jump to the conclusion, well, my beliefs must be, uh, uh, you know, all these things that, 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 that the media has labeled Donald Trump to be, and that, that is not the case. I'm witnessing with my own eyes the decline of American virtue. I'm witnessing with my own eyes the, the way that people have become so divided and I don't mean just politically I mean the way that uh, I don't know if it's if it's corporate greed I don't know what it is but 
we've 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 become so isolated. We don't we don't look after each other anymore. You know, say what you will about how turbulent the country was uh, 50 years ago. Uh, you know, 60 years ago, but there was a time when when we we just all gathered together as a nation when, when we suffered a tragedy, we all gathered together to pray. I'm seeing a decline in the family structure, even even what the definition of what a family is anymore. You know, there's parents that truly care about their, their kids. There's people that are still trying to to preserve these old-fashioned American family values. And it, and it doesn't mean that if, if you feel like you're an outlier of that of that traditional structure it doesn't mean that we shun you or we you're not validated or that we hate you it doesn't mean that whatsoever but I guess this is this is kind of like a fork in the road now of, of this channel because I can't I can't just sit back and and, and not speak up about what I'm seeing it it affected me um, you know, if, you know, if, if we're being honest here, this deeply concerns me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually very concerned, excuse me, because I can't go about my day-to-day -day life. I work with the public, and one of the first things I was encountered with today was a, a, a patron who I like a lot. Yes, he has... Uh, a brother who um, who uh, performs drag and and all that stuff. So I understand where he stands on on you know or as to why he might oppose Trump. Even though, again, I don't think at his core, I don't think Trump has any problems with with the LGBTQ uh, population. I don't think he has a problem with them. But I think he does have a problem with what he sees, uh, which is an agenda that that is hurting this nation. And uh, so, uh, one of the first things I was met with by this guy was, "Man, we were this close to not having to deal with that asshole anymore." And and I just kind of stopped and I said, "Look, not like that, not like that." Like, if you don't like the guy, just, you know, use your vote. That, that's, that's terrible. It's terrible. I would never, I would never, if, if, if there was ever an attempt on Biden, I would never be jeering. I would never be, you know, gloating or mocking about how, man, it, it It's not right. It's not right. And, and and I guess that's the point that I'm trying to make here. Regardless of where you align politically, it should not override our our basic human decency. So that's where I'm gonna leave this. It was a great cigar. Thank you, Fred. It goes great with the bourbon. And uh may God bless this nation and may God heal our hearts. Cheers.